My doll. Hi there, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to pick up part two of our previous episode on the beginning and ending of not only the whole speech, but also the elements, the sub elements, the chapters within the talk. Present oh Master Shimasho. This is the fourth year of the Presentations Japan Series podcast. We are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato Ku here in Tokyo. And I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, and I am the president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan and your corporate coaching and training guy. I am committed to your success. I'm also the best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. And my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, will be coming out in early 2021. Now, this podcast is here to help you to become a person who is a better speaker, who is clear, confident, persuasive, highly influential with those around you. And that's not a bad lineup, is it? Clear, confident, persuasive, highly influential with those around you. That's why you should subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, sadly, but we do value your privacy, which is why we choose to have this podcast hosted by Libsyn because. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. A daily lineup on iTunes looks like this. Mondays, Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday, Presentation Japan Series. And every second Tuesday, the Business Touches in No Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan Series. Thursday, the Leadership Japan Series. And every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast. Fridays, the Japan Business Master Show. And Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 219, 219. And we're talking about Primacy and Recency for Speakers, Part 2. In Part 1, we looked at the ideas of primacy, the first thing we remember, and recency, the last thing we remember, and what this means for speakers. Now, in Part 2, we'll go deeper with our entry and exit points of the chapters within the talk and how to choreograph the big crescendo for our polemics sparkling conclusion. We naturally have to pump a lot of energy into designing the opening stanza of our speech. On the surface of it, this would seem to be our one big chance to establish our theme, point of view, and talk direction with the audience. The opening is a battering ram to smash into the brains of the assembled masses and launch a takeover of their every thought. Well, this is easier said than done, though, because any lapse of logistics or vocal quality and energy will see them scampering for the mental exits to get their internet fix mainlined through their phones. Even if we do manage to hijack them at the start, I cannot presume we won't lose them somewhere midstream. That is why when we do the planning for the talk, we need to design distinct chapters into the talk. These chapters are constructed around the evidence that supports our central proposition. Now, these chapters have a primacy and recency function as well. The opening of the chapter has to dislodge that last thing we told them and replace it with the new bauble. Most speakers pay no attention to this chapter idea and just arrange their talk to move from one section to the next. Sections 
of the talk compete with each other for audience attention, and we have to be aware of that. At each chapter start, we need a mini battering ram to blast the tunnel deeper into the listener's mind. We've just told them some scintillating detail, backing up our overall point, and now we need to dislodge that so we can ship in the next point. Stories are good for this exercise, as are questions, quotes, facts, and statistics. We are wading deep in our evidence portion of the talk at this point, but the facts need to be arrayed before the audience in such a way that makes them irrefutable. In a 40-minute speech, each chapter will be about five minutes long, so taking out the blockbuster opening and the first stupendous close before the Q&A, we probably have time for six or seven chapters. So that means we need some variety with each opening. Starting each chapter with the same thing becomes predictable and boring. Predictability is the speaker's nemesis because it invites the audience to escape from us now that they know what is coming next. To know what's coming next, find out more after the break. Today's show is sponsored on the 18th of January, 2021, by the Secrets of How to Make Human Relationships and Public Speaking. On the 22nd of January, we'll have in our professional leadership series, How to Lead, Not Just Manage, and also on the 22nd of January, we'll be doing Managing Stress. Now you can find more information about those programs and other courses at our website, enjapan.dalekanegi.com. There's lots of value for you there. If you want to do better in Japan, just email me, greg.story at dalekanegi.com. If you like learning by watching videos, we have over a thousand for you at Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. Now, we are releasing three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's a premier business show in Japan, comes out every Monday. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Master Show. Saturdays, we have Japan's top business interviews, where I interview the corporate leaders, all the way from SMEs to the corporate captains of industry, on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. Don't forget, get my book, The Bible on Selling, Japan Sales Mastery, and also Japan Business Mastery. Both are available on Amazon. My new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, will come out early 2021, and it'll also be available on Amazon. Welcome back. In the planning stage, Investigate the point you are making to support your overall argument and see what type of opening the evidence lends itself to. There may be some doubling up with the opening gamuts, but try for as much variety as possible to keep audience attention on you, the speaker. The end of each chapter is a mini close as well. That means we have to come up with a zinger, one-sentence finisher that really makes your key argument sing. This is all a matter of planning, and that is the rub. Most speakers do a poor job of planning because they are waist-deep in slide assembly and logistics. This is what they call planning, but that is delusionary. We have used each chapter 
to make our case and each chapter ending to summarize the facts and evidence of that section. At the first close, before the Q&A, we need to bring the whole juggernaut to a crescendo. Again, this is all about our design creativity and communication expertise. Naturally, the vocal delivery is a rise at the end of the final sentence that barks credibility, power, conviction, and belief. We finish strongly. Implant a pregnant pause that invites the audience to recognize we're finished and that they may now unleash their frenzied applause. We then glide straight into the Q&A, following which we add another powerful close. It can mimic the first one. It could be different. It is all in the planning and what type of impact you want. Nevertheless, the vocal delivery will again be triumphant, strong, and commanding. Many speakers end with the whimper, their voice quietly falling away. Don't be one of them. Go out powerfully, with energy, verve, and supreme confidence. Deliver an ending they won't forget, because we know the power of recency, and we want our message to stick. Did you get value from today's show? If you did, then share the love around with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this podcast on iTunes. Until the next episode, go out there and apply the learnings from today and become a presentations legend amongst your circle. Thank you for listening. Please tune in next week. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>